Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Now, I was going to do a study on Ezekiel, but I decided to do Joel instead. Joel is one of those end time uh, chapter or books. It's got a lot of prophecy for the end times. But then when I started looking into it, I realized I'd have to do business with the symbolism of the Bible. You know, you, you can't understand the Bible if you don't understand the symbolism. I mean, after all, Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is called the Lamb of God. Well, first the Lamb comes, and then after the Lamb came, the perfect sacrifice, well then, the next time he comes, well, it's going to be a lion. And I'll tell you what, ain't going to be a lamb hanging on a cross. I'll tell you that right now. So, I would suggest turn your Bibles to Genesis 3 and verse 1. Now, I've done Genesis 3, 1 a lot, but uh, Genesis 3 is one, probably the first prophecy of the Bible. It tells you of the coming of the Messiah that's going to crush the head of the serpent. And of course, it's not talking about an actual snake. Revelation tells you who the serpent is, that old uh, the dragon, the old dragon, you know, the, the great red dragon, that old serpent, the devil and Satan. But people spiritualize Genesis 3, and what can you do? All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he, God, said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So, God had warned the woman, Eve, Stay away from the tree. Okay? God's word is law. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the woman said, un and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. It's funny, in John 8, 44, uh, Jesus told a group of people that they were of their father, the devil, being a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Well, first first recorded, some of the first recorded words out of the serpent's mouth is a lie. Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods. Ooh. Yep, yeah, disobey this, this guy, and you're going to be gods. Ooh. Isn't that what they teach today? You know, that's the difference between Christianity and all the other religions. All the other religions, Hinduism, and like, I think Buddhism, and Mormons, they all teach that man could become God. But they'll deny that God became man in the person of Jesus Christ. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sowed 
fig leaves together very and made themselves aprons. Now, this is a very, very important point here. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Why fig leaves? Why? Well, fig leaves, as I'm going to prove later on in the study, was the symbol of the tribe of Judah. Grapes, the vine, was the symbol of Israel. Now, all true people of Judah are Israelites, but not all Israelites are of Judah. You know, all Texans are Americans, but not all Americans are Texans. Judah was just one tribe out of 12. There was 11 others who were of Israel. Now, Christ was of the tribe of Judah. Isn't that funny? So they made themselves aprons out of fig leaves. They were trying to cover their sin. You know, it's funny, when you read Genesis 6, and you read Job 38, and find out who the sons of God are, that existed before the earth was created, and Adam didn't exist until six days after the earth was created. So the sons of God in Job 38 can't possibly be humans because they didn't, Adam didn't even exist until six days after the earth was created. But the sons of God of Job 38 existed before or while the earth was being created. The laid the foundations of the earth. Take a look. Read it yourself. But when you read Genesis 6, you see the sin of the angels was of a sexual nature. And when you realize that, you kind of, some people look at the veiled language in Genesis 3. And you wonder, okay, they know they're naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Why are they covering themselves down there with aprons? You know, you kind of wonder. At least I do. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Didn't, uh, weren't we warned in the Bible to have garments? Now, in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9, I know I've covered some of this material in the past. I've done a lot with Genesis 3. I think it's a very one of the most important chapters in the Bible, but uh, your average denominational preacher will not touch it with a 10-foot theological pole because they're afraid to do business with it. All right, so in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had. And what testimony? The testimony of Jesus, people. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So evidently, the people on the earth have 
killed these people. Verse 11, and white robes, isn't a robe a garment? Oh yeah. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when they had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And that uh, scripture, that last sentence that I read about the sun becoming black, well, guess what? That's in the book of Joel. But before I do the book of Joel, I got to do business with the fig tree. Back to Genesis 3.11. And he said, God, who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, it's the woman's fault. It's her fault. You gave her to me. It's her fault. Oh, I'm sorry. And the, woman, and the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, it's the devil's fault. The devil made me do it. Oh, never mind. Oh, that's the Bob translation. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed, cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, that means hatred, people. And I will put enmity between thee, the devil, the serpent. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. You know, there's a lot of people, they'll spiritualize the serpent seed. But then they'll say, oh, well, the woman's seed is, you know, it's Christ. That's the woman's seed. Real children. But then they'll spiritualize the devil's seed. Is it really? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Hmm. First, prophecy. The seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the serpent. And yet, the seed of the serpent is going to bruise his heel. Verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Huh? In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. What? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They do some kind of a sin. They make aprons to cover their private parts, the fig leaves. And then the Lord says he's going to multiply their sorrow in conception, having children. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Why didn't he, you know, if they ate an apple hanging from a tree, why didn't he give them a toothache? You know, why, what's up with this? You know, sorrow and, and, and bringing forth children. If you ever go to a maternity ward, you're going to see women suffer pain having children. Verse 17, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. They put on Christ's head a, 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 a thorn, a crown of thorns, right? Verse 19, in the sweat of thy face 
shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Okay. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. Evidently, this was the first animal sacrifice in the Bible. All right, let, we're just going to go through some scriptures here real quick. This is probably at least going to be a two-part study. Numbers chapter 13, verse 21. Now, this is when uh, Israel left Egypt under in Exodus, and they're going into the Promised Land. Okay, So they, Israel, so they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin. I know so, they spell it Z-I-N, but Sometimes it's spelled S-I-N, the wilderness of sin, unto Rehob as men come from Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came into Hebron, where Ahimai, Shishai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. The children of Anak, those were the giants. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshel and cut down from thence, a branch with one cluster of grapes. Grapes was a symbol of Israel. And they bear it between two upon a staff, and they brought it, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. Now, Israel was the grapes, Judah was the figs, what was the pomegranates? I don't know if there's some symbolism, but this is a land of plenty. A lot of fruit, okay. The place was called the brook Ishol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. Now what's interesting is two things. One, uh, the fig the fig, and the fig leaves, the first time something's mentioned in the Bible, it gives you a clue as to what the meaning is. Well, let's face it, the fig, the fig leaves, they made aprons of it. Tells you they were covering, you know, made a covering for their sin, right? And at least that's how I look at it. But a lot of times, and another thing too, is names had meanings in the Old Testament. I mean, there, there was just, you know, the place was called the brook Ishal, because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. So evidently, E-S-H-C-O-L has something to do with grapes. And Israel's going to settle in this area. And Israel was likened unto grapes. And I'm going to prove that later on. We're not ready. We're not there yet. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments, verse 6. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil, oil, olive, and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Of course, that was for, you know, obedience. Was Israel obedient? No. Certainly weren't. All right, so let's take a look at Judges chapter 9. And Abimelech 
the son of Jerubbabel. That's spelled J-E-R-U-B-B-A-A-L. B-A-A-L was the name, well, it originally it meant Lord, but it became so associated with Satanism that the Lord said, don't call me that anymore. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, don't call me that anymore. So, Jerubbabal, Jerubbabal. So, when you got your name named after Baal, uh, I've heard about Baal, Baal, you know, it's sort of like the and the, Caribbean, Caribbean. Oh, so, and Abimelech, and Abimelech, the son of Jerubbabal, went to Shechem un, unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether is better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubbabal, which are three score and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver out of the house of baal Berith, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. So evidently each person gave him a piece of silver. And he went unto his father's house in Ope, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey, and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbabel, being threescore and ten persons upon one with stone, notwithstanding yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left, for he hid himself. So here it is, this really wonderful guy decides to kill all his brethren, and only one of them escapes. And all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gizram and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. Now listen carefully. The trees, trees, T-R-E-E-S, you know, plants, the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. Hmm. So how do trees go forth and anoint a king over them? They don't. This is a figure of speech. You know, you ever heard, guys, you ever hear the expression, oh, that girl, she's built. Yeah, you know, or she's a fox, or he's a hunk, gir uh, girls, you know. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. Now, the olive is Israel, right? But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, W-I-N-E? The vine, V-I-N-E, said unto them, Should I leave my wine, W-I-N-E, because you make wine out of grapes, right? Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble. A bramble's like a, a weed, right? Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire, fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely, and that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerubbabel and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving, deserving of his hands. For my father, 
fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. So evidently his father had fought Midian, an enemy of Israel, and, you know, did a lot of good things for Israel. But what did they do? This, this great man that fought for Israel, they killed all his sons. You know? And ye are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, three score and ten persons, upon one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbabel and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo. And let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. In other words, may both of you burn each other up. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer, B-E-E-R. That sounds like a place to go when you're watching a football game, huh? You go to Beer. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. So here it is, you know, promote the, you know, who, what tree is going to be the king, right? All right, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 23. Ten fat oxen and twenty oxen out of the pastures and a hundred sheep beside harts and roebucks and fallow deer and fodder fowl. For he had dominion over all the region on this side, the river from Tipshan even to Azah, over the kings on this side, the river, and he had peace on all sides round about him. And Judah and Israel, see, Judah and Israel are not the same people. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree. Ah, now I'm going to prove to you that Israel is the, the grapevine. But listen, you know, this is what you call parallelism. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree. From Dan even to Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. Of course, Solomon was King David's son that was ruling, right? So that's what parallelism. The vine, the fig. And I, believe me, I'm just getting started. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 29. Um, the Assyrians, let me give you a little background. Assyrians had come and taken northern Israel into captivity. Now, and they'd taken part of Judah too. But now they come to Jerusalem. But God ain't going to let them have Jerusalem. Nope. Thus saith the king, let not Hezekiah, that's the king of Israel, let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, oh, saying, the Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. The Assyrians were nasty people, people. 31. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine, and every one of his and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil olive and of honey, that ye may live and not die, and hearken not unto Hezekiah. When he persuadeth you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Well, guess what? The Lord did deliver Hezekiah, if I remember correctly. The Assyrians came and surrounded Judah, uh, Jerusalem. They didn't, they didn't make it. All right, 2 Kings chapter 20. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out 
of the hand of the king of Syria. And I will defend the city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. See, these the Syrians were mocking God. Oh, God can't, even God can't save you from us Assyrians. And what does, what does the Lord say? And I will defend the city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs, mm. figs, the symbol of Judah. Christ was the lion of the tribe of Judah. Haven't you ever read, by his stripes we are healed? Oh, yeah. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I will go up into the house of the Lord the third day? And if you want to, you can keep reading. But, you know, I just wanted to cover the um, the fig thing. Okay, First Chronicles. Chronicles of the kings of Israel, chapter 12. All, verse 38. All these men of war that could keep rank come with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. Now, there was a time when David was king of Israel and Saul, King Saul, was king of Judah. Did you know that? And people will tell you that Israel and Judah are the same thing. No, they aren't. Verse 39, And there they were with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brethren had prepared for them. Moreover, they that were nigh them, even unto Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, that's three tribes of Israel, Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali, brought bread on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen and meat, meal, cakes of figs, and bunches of raisins. Figs is Judah, raisins are Israel, right? And wine and oil and oxen and sheep abundantly, for there was joy in Israel. Now, sometimes when they're talking about figs and ra uh, grapes and raisins, yeah, they're they're talking about food. But you know, other times there's a symbolic uh, meaning. Proverbs twenty-seven, verse sixteen: Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. And the ointment of his right hand, which bereath itself. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Whosoever keepeth the fig tree, is, is Jesus the tree of life? I think so. Whosoever keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. And who's our master? Christ. As in water face answereth the face, so the heart of man to man. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 11. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard. In our land. Voice of the turtle? Don't ask me. Because I don't know. Verse 13. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs. And the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O my dove, thou art in the cleft of the rock. In the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice. And thy countenance is comely. All right, well, I think I'm going to make this the end of part one. When we come back, we're going to start in the book of Isaiah. And I still have to prove to you that uh, the grapes are Israel and 
the figs are Judah. Did you ever wonder why Jesus cursed the fig tree? Oh yeah, Jesus cursed the fig tree. And that's where we're, we're leading up to. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.